So today we are going to uh, look at the performance of silicone structural glazing or bonding mm -hmm. under extreme conditions uh, related to typhoons. Now I'm saying typhoons, but I'm really talking about storms, rotating storms that are happening um, in over tropical waters. So it's really um, uh, just a matter of wording. And uh, we have the same phenomenon happening in the Asia Pacific, then it's called a typhoon. If it's uh, happening over the Atlantic Ocean, it's a hurricane. And then around India, it's like called a cyclone. And um, it's all known, it's no fake news, that there is global warming. And the global warming is actually having an effect on these typhoons. So recent studies have confirmed that uh, global warming and the rise of the temperature of the surface leads to an increase in uh, frequency of typhoons and in strength of uh, typhoons. So we are um, observing more and more intense uh, typhoons. And on this little video, you can see actually um, a building in Hong Kong that's being hit by uh, the typhoon Mankut last year in September. Um, so a bit more information about Mankut. It was the fifth tropical cyclone that hit uh, Hong Kong in 2018. And um, the Hong Kong Observatory mentioned that the intensity of the storm was really extreme. So it required the highest level of typhoon signal, number 10, for 10 hours. And that was really the highest recorded since the observatory was created at the end of the Second World War. Um, peak intensity, we have really um, maximum wind of 250 km per hour at the, at the, at the center. Um, and that was the largest one since 1998. That results, of course, in many injuries, damage, uh, flying debris will smash windows, uh, and, and the total damage was accounted for as 3.74 uh, billion. So now if we have a closer look at this building that I just showed you in the video, um, so it's actually two harbor fronts. It's in the area of Hung Ham, and it was a project from 1993. It was originally a two-sided structural glazed wall that was uh, using 983, which is a conventional two-part silicone uh, that we use for structural glazing. It was refurbished partially in uh, 2008, and when Mankut hit, it had then more than 10 years at least um, in terms of um, exposure to extreme conditions. Now, we had the opportunity to perform a deglazing test on these uh, windows because, as you can see, they were all smashed. And we investigated the quality of the silicone uh, that had been in, um, exposed to these conditions. So a deglazing test will look at different aspects like is there indeed cohesive failure? What's the strength we obtain? Um, do we observe any other kind of defects like hardness change and so on? So that was all good. Um, and it was confirmed that the silicone is actually performing well, even after this event. And this is even more visible. If you look at this enlarged picture, you see that the glass is still retained around its perimeter by the silicone. And the, the damage was really caused by unlocked opening uh, windows, uh, debris impact, which explains why there's also in other areas a requirement to do some impact uh, testing for um, this kind of event. And sometimes as well, maybe the glass thickness was not properly dimensioned. On the top right image here, you see an old uh, project. I think it was in Taiwan. And that was um, a gasket glazed wall. And you see the difference is that the whole window in that case was blown out. So the, there's no retention anymore of, um, of, of the glass thanks to the silicone. And so if we compare silicone structurally glazed facades with a dry stick system that is field directed, we can see clearly a big benefit that the SSG is going to happen most of the time in factory. So we have a daily quality control that can happen um, on the contrary of a field directed system where we will have maybe once, twice a visit of a quality um, auditor or inspector. Um, another interesting um, case study is Exchange Square um, from Hong Kong. Uh, it was built in 1984. It's one of the first SG system um, projects in, um, in China. It's again a two-sided SG, used uh, 795 as structural silicone. Um, and the dimensioning uh, took into account 5,100 pascal as wind load. 
the bite in Hong Kong is apparently always, um, if there is a requirement for 30 millimeter, there will be some extra added to um, add safety. And since its construction in 1984, actually, I went on that website from the Hong Kong Observatory of Tropical Cyclones, and there were hit by, this building was hit by more than 100 tropical cyclones. So we really have here a fantastic example of durability, 35 years, still standing tall, um, even with all these extreme conditions. But as I said, it's like overdimensioned. We have really a lot of silicon. And recently, uh, we were faced with a different situation. So this is Ping An International Finance Center. It's a building in Shenzhen, so it's a little bit north of Hong Kong. And it dates from 2017. So this project is a four-sided SSG. And it uses uh, the 993N, so that's our Chinese-produced uh, version of the, of the two-component two structural glazing system. So we have a design strength that is like our materials here in Europe, so 0 0.14 uh, megapascal and uh, 0 0.011. Um, and we had to dimension for 5.72 kPa. Now, um, this required a joint dimension of 32 by 11, but due to frame limitation, it was not possible to accommodate this thickness. And the customer wanted to use a different joint, uh, 35 by 8, which has also a different aspect ratio that potentially leads to different capacity to move. So um, we decided to um, perform some finite element analysis to verify that these joints that are not the conventional ones that have been already proven uh, as, as working, we have those durability examples in the past, that it would still function. Now we uh, verified loadings that were submitted uh, by the, the, the building company of 5.72, but to take into account the fact that typhoons will continue to increase in strength over the next years, uh, decades. Uh, we also tested for an extra wind load of 20% uh, extra. So we also evaluated the performance of the system at 6.86 uh, kPa. Um, so to perform the finite element analysis, we first uh, characterized the material, so the 993N. Uh, that is done in a very systematic way for all our silicones that are used on the facade. Uh, we collaborate with uh, Axel Test Laboratory in the US to obtain really the pure material information, the uniaxial test piece, the AQB actual loading, the compression information. And then out of these three master curves, we will build then um, evaluate which one is the best material model. In this case, we selected a uh, um, polynomial second order uh, low, and you can see here the parameters uh, for the 993M. The software that we use is Abacus, and we use the um, element types that are indicated here. And in order to investigate potential failure, we decided to go into the uh, strain or stretch uh, space. Now, the reason for that is really that there is a direct link between what happens inside the sealant and what you measure, right? Um, the silicone is a mix of polymer chains, and as it's being deformed, those chains will elongate, and as they reach their maximum elongation capacity, it will break and we will observe uh, failure. So there's really a direct link with what is happening, what is measurable. Um, and there's also another advantage is that working with principal strains, we are independent of the material model selection. So choosing to work with a second order polynomial or if you want to do a different fit, you prefer to work with a neo Hokian or a Muni Rifflin, you will observe failure at the same uh, kind of uh, strains. Now, as the industry is more used to stresses and talking in the stress space, we also add that in this case just as an illustration but take into account that the stress results can depend on the choice of your material model and that we don't have a real direct link at this stage between what we measure in terms of local stress and potential failure. So the first step is to perform a conversion of those 
uh, macroscopic design stress values, the 014 megapascal that we are all familiar with, into finite element um, contexts. So we perform what we call a calibration exercise, and we take the joint dimension that we will use in a facade project, in this case 35 by 8, and uh, we mesh it with the mesh that we will use as well in the facade. So it's quite important that you're not using a finer mesh inside a small element and then a coarser mesh on, side a big, uh, on, on the, the total project out of convenience because your results will not be comparable. So uh, when you do that, uh, you apply um, a force that is a function of your uh, bonding surface of 35 and um, you go towards the force that corresponds with 0 0.14 megapascal. You then can see how much your first principal strain is. And you can also look at the theoretical fear, 0 0.84 megapascal, how much do I reach? So the idea is that on my full facade, if I stay below those results, I am on the safe mode. In a similar way, if I'm looking at von Mises stress, we look at the reaction force of 0 0.14 megapascal, how much do I have in local stress, in local vermeza stress, and as long as I stay below that, I have uh, safety, some kind of safety. As I said before, it's less um, clearly linked with the material failure at this stage. So we see that both parameters in b are able to, to nicely show the distribution of the strain stresses inside um, the joint. So here what you see is only the, the joint, so there's no substrate here, it's only the silicone layer, and you see that it's uh, highly concentrated around the perimeters. For the facade analysis, uh, we took a quarter of the IG unit, uh, so that's uh, 375 by 425, and we applied a uniform pressure uh, that is equivalent to once and 1.2 times, so 20 times more, the design wind load. We always work with um, perfectly rigid frame assumptions when we do modeling. Uh, there's some discussion to have there. We are conscious that this is not reality and that frames do deflect and release uh, some of the stress or strain that is put on the silicone. But this is our approach, so it's a more conservative approach, a more severe one um, uh, than in reality. We do um, use the same mesh as in the calibration exercise, so one cubic millimeter um, in this case. We perform then the analysis and uh, we look again to the first principal strain results and we compare those results versus what we had in the previous slide on the little H piece where we really understand very well failure mechanism because we've tested so many of them. And as we stay below those values, we know that we are on a safe mode. Same here, in the von Mises stress, we are well below uh, what is tolerable in um, this case. So this concludes um, the review of the use of silicone structural glazing um, for extreme conditions like typhoons. So there is no case uh, that has been reported where uh, SSG has failed during such extreme wind load. It's all a matter of uh, quality uh, control of um, a good pre-work uh, together with the facade designer and the silicone supplier and uh, make sure that we have a lot of attention to design, to testing, quality control follow-up during production and uh, we'll get to a successful results like this. So here you're seeing Ping An International Finance Center actually showing a warning to the inhabitants of Shenzhen for the arrival of Mankut. And uh, yeah, we're pretty sure it will be able to continue to do so for many more years. Thank you for your attention. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video, drop us a comment below, and share the video as well, since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click the bell icon. Ciao.